go ahead and line these clutches up so that way they're already kind of pre-lined with a screwdriver. So it should slip right over the ring gear real easily. I'm going to pull this up and then I'm going to put it right on top of my ring gear. You don't have to stand on that. So here's my ring gear, my bearing, and I should hear one, two, three, four, five. I should hear it or feel it five times when I go down. It's one, two, three, four, and you hear it bottom out right there. Mm -hmm. So I know I went down five times. When I said four, that was right when I heard it bottom out. That's all the way down. I changed these little slip rings right here on the, on the, on the, uh, the, the bearing, that sit right above the bearing here on the forward clutch. Okay, now we can go ahead and put this on. Okay. And this one's gonna take probably a little bit of a rag finger pressure to put this on, and it should go down five times. Now, we'll be lining up not only the clutch friction, but also the spline right here that attaches to the sun gear drum, which is right here, okay? These little notches. So it's going to be a little challenging and what we could do to kind of help us is we could get the, the output shaft down here and spin it and it just went down right there, okay? And we're completely down. And you can look and you see inside here and you can see where it made it up against the bearing deep down inside there against the drum, okay? So that's good. Now let's get our band. We've been soaking our band, our intermediate band, in the, in the fluid so that way it doesn't go in dry. On this side is the adjustment stud and on this side is the servo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Actually, wait a second, I made one mistake here. I need to do one thing first. I need to put in this little uh, band and I coat it with uh, uh, petroleum jelly. Needle nose, on needle nose. And I'm gonna put that right in there. There we go. And that should hold it in there. So now, where's my band? Now I'm gonna slip this down, be real careful not to knock it down, and it should that little uh, attachment latches onto this notch right here. So I'll go ahead and put this in. And then I can stick my finger through the, through the back side back here and I'm actually going to push through the valve, where the valve body would be, right through here and I'm going to line that notch up into my band. There we go. If you look inside there, you can see right where my, my, kind of my finger is. So that's all lined up. Mm -hmm. The second one, the other one that goes against the adjustment band, you could just put right through the case right here. And then you line it up with your, your adjustment. And we're good, okay? And then I could just run this down. And we'll adjust the band later. All I really wanna do is hold it in place, like this. So I can now find out if my stack up clearance is correct, okay? So if you're worried if it's down all the way, you could take the input shaft that goes into there, which is part of this other planetary, and I'm gonna actually put it in there um, like this, without the center support, and I'm gonna actually rotate that wholly onto the output shaft, just to make sure everything gets stacked up properly and gets spined together. And then, let's pull this out. Pull out our ring gear. So our next video, where we're at now, our next video is to use a micrometer and measure the stack up clearance on this. Okay, that's where we're at. All right, so we're, gonna, we're ready to put in our center support. Okay, we have right here our new uh, Teflon seals that have some graphite in it that seal against the intermediate uh, clutch. I have bearings, there's no needle bearings missing, so we're all good there. So now we're ready to put in this uh, center support. I'm gonna lubricate the inside. This is where the direct, the forward clutch seals. So the forward clutch gets its pressure here, 
the intermediate clutch gets its pressure on the outside. So I need to put my thrust bearing in here. I'm going to put this thrust bearing, I'm going to coat it with uh, petroleum jelly. So that way when I go down with this, it's going to stick and not drop off of this. So you hold it with petroleum jelly. Okay, on this side I'm going to put my next bearing. Okay, this is the bearing for the, the coast clutch. Okay, and we haven't overhauled that coast clutch yet, which will be our next step. I'm going to put this bearing here, and that's going to hold this in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop this in. We already have our band in. We already have our all our uh, back end of the tranny. Both clutch packs, two planetary sets, all our bearings. So now the trick is, is I need to get these... Uh, Teflon seals to go in without being damaged and remember these are these have a slit in them where they they're like have a cut that's designed so I need to work this in there's a special little trick I take the input shaft of the tranny and I'm gonna put this right down I'm gonna line up my holes here to the valve body which is on this side so these little holes are gonna face out I'm gonna drop this in right here line this up and then I'm going to take my input shaft and I'm going to use that to wiggle this down okay and then once when I'm down give it a little tap all the way around and then on the inside here come on this side I have my holes lined up so I could put in my 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 screw. So I'm gonna get my screw. So there's my torque spin. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this little clip right in here. And then I'm gonna install this into the center support right here. There we go. And then this bolt goes right here. So I don't have my torque socket ready, but that's where we're at with this. I will get my torque socket. But before I do that, let's go put in our last snap ring. This is the center support snap ring. Now I've been talking about center support snap rings have a direction. This obviously has a direction. So if you look at the tip of this, you'll see there's a flat side and you'll see there's a a, a beveled side. The bevel side always goes away from what you're trying to, to hold into place. The flat side is going to go against the center support. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in. And I'm going to put this right like this. I'm going to put it on an angle. And just tap that down and there's my center support make sure it gets shoved into both sides equally all the way around so I'm just going to use you could just use a screwdriver too and that's in place so the next step would be to get my torque socket and screw this also this little hole right here is for my turbine speed sensor so here's my turbine speed sensor and that's going to go right out of the in, uh, bottom of this uh, planetary set and it's going to get the turbine speed from the torque converter off of this. So I'm going to install this right now. My turbine speed sensor is going to go right through here. The, the cable goes through this little slot right here. Okay. Almost there. And then this drops down right into the hole. Almost there. And then come on this side. It, so we put it through this little slot right here. So that holds the harness in place so it can't move. And then it clips in right here. Okay, you cannot take out that center support without removing the turbine speed sensor first because of the harness. All right, we're good. 
Okay, so we're gonna put in our ring gear and our one-way clutch assembly. Okay, this is a one-way clutch sprag. We have another one-way clutch sprag at the very, very bottom on the rear planetary. So I uh, put petroleum, a very little amount of petroleum jelly on the on the needle bearing here, and this goes into the one-way clutch spray, and it should go in and should lock. It should turn one way, and then lock the other way. Turn, lock. So I'm gonna put this in in two pieces. We'll put in our band uh, um, assembly right here as well, and then we'll put our sun gear in. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, now remember, this splines into our forward clutch, so it's gonna go through the center support, through the intermediate clutch into our forward clutch. So I already have my needle bearing. I torqued my bolt from a turbine speed sensor to uh, 89 inch pounds. And I'm gonna put this in. Let me put a little bit of lubrication here because this, ri this rides on a needle bearing right here. So I'll put a little lube on that. I'll put this in. There we go. Oh look, our, our needle bearing came off right here. So let's take that off. I want this to be on my cage right here. So here's my assembly cage. This is the igniter ring for our turbine speed sensor. So, so let's go ahead and put this in. And it's a one-way clutch. Okay. And you can see how that goes right over my turbine speed sensor right down there. Okay and that's what generates our signal. Okay. Next up is our sun gear. And our sun gear has a little uh, uh, washer that locks onto it and it uh, locks onto the drum. So I'm gonna put this in. And again, these are directional, okay. Sometimes on these little notches, you'll see where they, they start to indent and if they do that, then you gotta replace this part. And that's gonna go right here. Okay, so we're all good with this. Now let's put in our band assembly. That slips in here. I'll put my, my band other piece here, and then we put in our, our, our dowel. So this is good. Let's get our band. Uh, I'm losing my name for the, what you would call this. Just a band pawl. Same procedure as before. I'm gonna glue it to the assembly here. I'm gonna glue it, and you don't want to drop this because if this drops, it could go all the way down. So you glue that in there and you leave it in place. So now we're ready to overhaul our forward clutch, our our, our other cl last clutch pack, and this is our coast clutch right here. So our clutch, clutch pack and then our uh, clearance should be 51,079 thousandths when we put it together. So I'm going to clean it and then we'll come back and do a video on how to overhaul it. Okay. Alright, so we're overhauling our, our close clutch. We actually don't have a seal protector for this. So we're going to try what we call a lip wizard. Okay. And instructions for use. Lubricate the bore, shaft and piston assembly. Square piston to shaft and bore, uh, a square piston to shaft and bore. When possible, install the inside lip first. That's important because it is a lip on the piston. So this goes down, okay? And then it wants to do the inside. Uh, insert the lip wizard, insulation disc between the shaft and inside lip. Roll disc around perimeter of shaft to install lip. Repeat for outside. So I'm not worried about the inside lip because it's going to go up against uh, this right here, which has a taper on it. So I'm going to lubricate this with petroleum jelly. Lubricate my outside with petroleum jelly. We already cleaned everything, okay? All right. Make sure my little check ball here is floating. I can hear it. So it's, it's good, okay. I'm gonna put, to help ease it, I'm gonna lubricate it with a little bit of tranny fluid. I did not really, remember a tranny with petroleum jelly makes it really slippery. Okay, so I'm gonna put that petroleum jelly on there and with the tranny fluid. Now we're ready to put the seals on. Okay, so again, lubricate the 
seal with petroleum jelly and we install that onto our piston and the lips always faces down so here's our lip it always faces down on a piston I'm going to insert that in my piston all the way around okay then I'm going to take my finger just like before and I'm going to uh, make sure it, it gets locked into that groove so I'm going to put it behind the seal in the piston and I'm going to work it and that folds those lips down it helps e ease it into the into the uh, cylinder so again inside lip seal put that in lip side facing down okay Got to make sure that it's seated into that bore, so I'm going to put my finger and I'm going to rotate it all the way around. Alright, we're ready to go in. Okay, so let's go ahead and put my seal protector or my uh, lip wizard in here. Get some tranny fluid on this because we want this to be slippery too. Okay, and then I'm going to put this over. Actually, wait, take it back. Put the lip wizard in first. And I'll put my piston in. Okay. And I'm just going to rotate it around, slowly pushing my piston. And what this is trying to do is trying to tuck that lip into the bore. A little bit jammed up there. Go ahead and raise this side up. We went too far down on this side, so I'm going to raise it just a hair. Rotate it around. It should go nice and smooth. You don't ever want to force it. I've done this with a feeler gauge before and had success. Okay? But you don't want to just push this piston down. You, it should just fold down nice and easily. Shouldn't be no forcing whatsoever. Okay? Keep going. Let's see. There we go. Okay, that piston's in. Let's go ahead and put our springs on. And we're going to air check this too in this video. So I'm going to put this on. All these springs. Sometimes these springs are part of the retainer and you don't even have to do this. In this case, they're all individual. I really like the transmissions where the springs are attached to the retainer. Okay, I'm gonna put my retainer on. Get that ready. Put in my clutch spring compressor. Okay, get it centered over. Just push. Now we're ready to put our snap ring on with our snap ring pliers. And I'm going to put it on this side right here. Okay. Put that on, slide it down. Push it in. Remember, if a snap ring is in properly, it should spin. Okay? If it doesn't spin, then you're not in the groove. We're in. Release. This clutch is pretty much done. Let's get my clutches. We've already soaked these clutches, but it doesn't hurt to get them wet again. And it's always going to go steel. Steel. Friction. Steel, friction, steel, friction, and then we have our pressure plate. Pressure plate right here. Our pressure plate in, make sure it's not directional and doesn't look like it. Put this guy in, that's our snap ring. We 
have only two clutches in here. My mistake. I knew something wasn't right, so I'm gonna take one out. Remember, this was this kit was for a 4R44E and also a 4R55 or 5R55E. So it takes one less clutch in each clutch back. So I just take one, put it with the other extra. And now I have two. And now the stack of clearances should be correct. It's good I make these mistakes because you see that it's pretty pretty easy to not pay attention to all the details. There's so many details, it's unreal. Okay, so there's that. We got that in. Okay, and now we're ready to go ahead and air check it. I have not bothered overhauling my, my pump yet, but we could go ahead and air check this all the same. So I'm going to put this on, grab my air nozzle, and I believe, if, I, if I'm wrong, we'll get sprayed with fluid. So I'm going to air check this, and I believe it's this one. Nope. Let's try this one. Three tries is a charm. There we go. And you can see. Now we do this because I want to verify I did not cut that, that seal when I installed it. And it looks like it's applying just fine. Okay. Now see the gap right here? We're going to measure that. It should be 51 to 79,000. It's going to be 54, which should be just above it. And that should go in and it and it actually does just fine. Nice and it has a little bit of a tug. Okay, you want to check it in several places. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that one's good. Last one right here goes in nice and snug underneath the snap ring. Okay, this clutch pack is ready. Let's install it. Okay, so now the drum itself is going to spine onto the sun gear. The clutches are going to spline onto the planetary gear. I'm going to line these clutches up. And we only, what's nice about this one is we only have two clutches that I have to actually align. So it should drop down two times. One, two, it's done. Okay, let's go ahead and put our band in now. So we're going to put our band in, I'm going to engage this uh, pole over here, the band pole. So let's get this in here, like that, engage this one pole right here, I'm going to just slide that over and lock it into my, my band. Make sure it engages the tooth, which it did. And then my other piece before my band, I'm gonna slide into the back. So you're gonna watch it in here and you're gonna see, I'm gonna pull the band across. So I'm gonna pull this entire band and let's use a, a tool for it. And you guys are gonna be lucky because you're gonna have extra people, extra hands. I'm trying to do this without extra hands. There we go. Okay, hold that in place. Get my paw. Almost. There we go. Now I'm going to screw this in, and you should see that band come right across. And there we go, right there. And I'm just going to install the band so it holds this drum kind of loosely where I could spin it. And we're good. Now we're ready to overhaul the bell housing with the pump and install that, and we're almost about three quarters of the way with our tranny. Yep. Okay, so last video we went over the coast clutch that goes on this. We showed you how you air check it. Now I took apart the, the, the pump and everything was going great. 
I took out the bolts and I was cleaning it, obviously. And let me show you how this pump comes apart. So everything is directional on a tranny. So I take my pump, I flip upside down. Here's my separator plate. Here's my gears, okay? Same thing, gears are directional. Ford's kind of good, it gives you a notch on the the gear the pump gear that goes onto our torque converter. So this actually locks onto our torque converter right here. So this is driven by our torque converter. Okay? Goes like that. And then this is the other gear that this is this, this drives, and this has a dot. And so with four, this dot always has to go into the pump. Like that. And then this gear right here, the knot, the, the little tapered on the notch needs to go up towards the torque converter. And then our separator plate. But here's here's what I found. Okay, what I found was I was cleaning this and all was good, and then I came across this bushing right here. Okay, and you, you could see it's completely all the copper's gone. And then I come around to this side, and then it starts to get thick again. And then you have the oil slot groove right here. So this side actually, I, I first inspected, I go, oh, that's not too bad. I clean up with some emery cloth. Then when I rotated this around, and then I saw where the copper's gone, and I see the grooves, I go, okay, I need a bushing. But then I, then I immediately know what rides on this bush is my torque converter. And here's my torque converter right here. So the, the oil pump gear goes right here, and the bushing rides right where these grooves are. And based on what I see, these grooves are pretty worn. Let me actually measure it real quick. Okay, so this is a vernil caliper. I want to just measure my met, my uh, my grooves. So I'm going to zero it out, and expand it. I'm going to measure where where the it's good. So the outside diameter on this is one inch and six hundred six hundred and ten thousandths, roughly. Let's see, it's right here. So I have a raised one. So one inch, I'm past the six, and then I'm on the 10. So it's one inch and 610 thousandths. Now let's go to the groove. And let's measure the groove right there. And the number is gonna actually be smaller, and I'm on the 80, so. It was right on the 80 when I measured it. So let's get down to 80 right there. There we go. So it's one inch and 580 thousandths. That groove is 30 thousandths thick. Because we should, we were over here on the thicker part. So put put it in perspective. Let's put that. Let's just go to 30 thousandths. So diameter wise, that's how much of a machining that we took off the rotor on both sides. So 15 thousandths uh, on, the, on the diameter all the way around, it should be 30. So the owner wants to go ahead and replace it. So we're gonna replace it. I'm gonna replace this bushing with a new bushing. And when I put it together, I gotta use this alignment dowel. So I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna replace the bushing with a bushing installer, this one, okay? As far as the seal, let's go ahead and take this out. Take out our seal, we're going to throw that away. Okay. And then we'll drive out that bushing, we'll drive in another bushing, and then when we put it back together, we're going to put this on. And then we have to get this pump aligned with that bushing. So the, what you actually have to do is you have to use an alignment dowel which lines the bushing with the pump. You get that all aligned in place and then you can install the bolts and you could properly torque it. So that's our next step. So.
Our next video will probably be us reassembling this and putting it in the in the tranny. Okay. Okay, we had a heck of a time installing this uh, bushing right here. Or we already took out the old bushing, so we used a bushing remover tool or an installation tool to to remove it, but it wasn't the right tool to install it. It was uh, not the right size. So we actually finagled, we used a socket, and we used the old bushing, and we put the old bushing right here. We started it like this, so we put the old bushing on top, and we used the bushing installer to get it driven into the case. But to get it the right depth, because the, the torque converter is lubricated right through this little slot from the pump. So to get it, get it where we're below this ridge, we had to use a socket that was the right depth. And then we hit the socket in, that drove it so we had this little ridge going across. And then I lightly hit it with emery cloth, and then I just lubricated. So a little, little bit of emery cloth. Um, this is it right here. So we took this, we sanded all the little ridges that uh, we created, all the little burrs. Got those down, put a coat of uh, grease. So now I'm going to flip it over. And now we're going to install our grease, our, our torque converter seal. And I, this is the reason why I'm really showing this video. It's a torque converter seal has a spring on here, just like a wheel bearing grease seal. So I'm going to install this using a special tool. And here's the special tool. You just put it right on here. This lines up with the dowel with the bushing inside the tranny. Okay. But what I wanted to show you was how I packed the all anytime you have a seal that has even including engines that have a spring like this, before you install it, you pack it with grease like this, and that holds the spring from popping off when you install it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, finish doing this and then install it into the tranny. Uh, and then once when I get this installed, the next step is to use this aligning dowel. This is going to go into here and this will line up with our pump. And this will line our gear to the torque converter, our front pump gear. Okay. So it aligns the, the, the seal, the bushing, and the gear itself to the pump to our torque converter. And we're getting a new torque converter. Okay. So two special tools that we have and a master bushing installer kit, which we were missing one size that we needed. Okay. All right, we're ready to install this pump. I overhauled it. I replaced the bushing. I replaced the seal. I use a pump alignment dowel right here to align the, the pump to the bushing and the seal and also resizes the seal. I changed my Teflon seals here. I have my thrust washer here. It's all been torqued to uh, I think it was 21 foot pounds, these, each of these Torx bolts. So I would torque them in a star pattern when I did it, okay, to 21 foot pounds. I put this uh, new O-ring on, this outer O-ring right here. So this is all new, okay? These seals are new. I also went and changed all my O-rings on my bell housing bolts. So these are my bell housing. I changed these O-rings. All, all it really is is take a screwdriver, loop it under, and just roll it out, put the new one on, screwdriver, roll it back down. And we changed all my bell housings, okay? So I have a seal. Now I need to put my gasket on top of here, so let me get a little bit of Petroleum jelly. I'm gonna just put some petroleum jelly right here, just kind of hold it in place so it doesn't move. I'm gonna lay this pump gasket right down here on top. You can step on that, Levano, you can step on that. Okay, now, the, the book gives you a special tool that you need to use to align this. I put my input shaft here. It's a special tool. All I did was I make, took two bolts and I cut the heads off and these are my alignment tools. These will hold the gasket in place and it will help me line my pump up to the transmission and to the gasket. So this serves two purposes, to hold the gasket and line this, line this up. So we're ready, okay? 
I'm going to go ahead and put this pump on. And it should slide down right on top. And it's really challenging if you don't have these alignment dowels to guide it on. You, the gasket moves real easy. And there we go. Take these alignment dowels out. Three, and I don't recommend using air ratchets, okay? Or even an impact gun. Everything on tranny is hand torqued. It's okay to use air tools when you take it apart, but when you put it together, it's all hand tools and torque wrenches. Got my alignment dowel, and we're done. Cut. Hit the button. No. Okay. All right. This is my tail shaft of my transmission. We're going to put it on next. We're going to put it with our parking gear and our parking ball, which is what gives us our park, our, ge our park gear right here. Okay. So I'm going to actually shift the tranny. This is what engages the pole. I'm going to actually engage it to about reverse right there. I don't want it to go all the way because then I got to overcome the, the spring pressure of this. So, but before we do that, let's change our rear tail shaft seal. We have a new seal right here that we need to pack with grease. Okay, so follow me over or petroleum. It's the same thing as before. It's a spring, so I'm just going to Cover that seal spring with a layer of petroleum jelly, just like wheel bearings. Okay, get it all the way around. So that spring won't pop off, or less likely to pop off. Okay. Now for my seal, the old seal, I dented it, and now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna work this screwdriver all the way around. This is a good way to, to get seals started. I'm just going to work it all the way around. Again right here, work it all the way around. Okay. Now same, same seal remover that you'd use for wheel bearings. I'm going to put this right here. Out. One. There we go. Okay, we're good. So here's my old seal. Throw that in our pile. Here's our new seal. I have a seal protector that protects the seal too. Put that on. Turn this right over. I'm going to make sure that the bush, the, this is a bushing in here. We have a new bushing that we can install, but the bushing that's in here looks perfectly fine, so I'm not gonna change it. Now let's install our seal. Put a petroleum jelly in here. Slide this down, should go. Back 
good. Okay, so we have our seal installed. Now I'm gonna put a dowel into this tranny right here. I'm gonna put my parking pole spring right here. Here's my parking pole. Yeah. So it goes underneath here. should be a nice little movement like this where this little lever so this little lever right here is going to go in here and that's what engages your parking pole okay? before I can do that I got to glue my gasket so put some gasket on here uh, petroleum jelly this is going to hold my my gasket in place Here, line that up. Line up my shift, my shifter right here. I'm gonna line that up. You can zoom in on this right here so you can see. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna actually install it into the parking pole like this. And then it goes right on. Should slide right on. As soon as I line them shaft up, there we go. And this you should never lose. This is your transmission tag, it's an identification tag. Make sure you always keep this with the tranny so you can identify the, this, the model number and, and also it's pretty much a serial number for the transmission. Okay. Get that started. this all the way down make sure we don't have a harness in there obviously make my switch one start pattern two Okay, here's our valve body. We just took off our set separator plate over here. We haven't started cleaning it yet. But I want to show you how I organize my check ball. So as soon as I take off the separator plate, pay real attention to any pressure relief uh, spring and um, valve like this. And there's one over here. There's two of them. Okay, and I'll zoom in on one of them. Um, this one is particularly color coded. So this is actually chrome. And the one over here is black, and they go in the, the adjacent hole right here. So with today's technology, I recommend taking pictures of this. I, also, there's a little hockey puck here with a little orifice to restrict the, the amount of fluid going through it. Uh, there's, let me see, one check ball here, and one check ball here, another one here. Where? Oh, and there's another one right here. And so I'm looking at, if I zoom out, one, two, three, four, four check balls. Now here's the problem. I have four check balls, but over in here is an extra space for a check ball. And so I already marked it. So if, the, if you have a goalie like this with no check ball, just take a screwdriver and scribe it. So you know this one doesn't require a check ball because I guarantee you will not remember. Versus this one needs a check ball so you leave it unscribed. So when you put this back together there's no second guess.
Okay, and then we're just going to clean this with brake clean, no solvent, only brake clean, and then put a little bit of uh, Sterling jelly on it to hold the gasket and torque it down with our bolts. Um, when I put the separator plate on this, okay, these bolts. Flip it over. I need one right here. I need one right here. And I need one right here. And these bolts are torqued a little less than the valve body itself. So these are actually, I think, torqued to about 80 inch pounds. And then the valve body is going to be torqued to about 90, 95. But I will double check that. Okay, so I just pulled off uh, the gasket. I still have the check balls in here, but a couple things I wanted to go over. Uh, I pulled the gasket off these little pieces right here. Got to be real careful with a razor blade. Razor blade is the best. Most people tend to want to cut these off going this way. And I really don't recommend it. I recommend dragging. Dragging it. Okay, and they'll come off that way if you if you push down hard enough and you drag it backwards, okay? Which makes it so there isn't any groove, it doesn't put any grooves into the, into the valve body. And you can see that those are pretty much gone, okay? So a good way to, to kind of clean up your valve body is just drag your razor blade backwards, not forwards. And you just take off any little remaining gaskets. You go both ways, you go diagonally, but you drag it backwards. No emery cloth. You use emery cloth, you're going to create low spots. I'm not creating low spots. All I'm really doing is want to take off the remaining pieces. Okay, so now, again, here's my, uh, my hole right here that I mark with no check ball. And here's a check ball, here's a check ball, here's a check ball. But there's also one thing I wanted to show you. These whole little spacers, just so there's little sections. You see one here? There's another one right here. They're very common in valve bodies, okay? And you also have little uh, uh, retainers here for the valves so you could take them out of the holes, okay? So when I spray this with brake clean, I'm going to blow dry it with a with an air nozzle, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very cautious and not spray directly into these passages that have these little pins because they'll fly out and then once when they fly out the question is where does this pin go? Does it go here? Does it go in the next hole? Next hole? And it becomes very confusing where these pins are supposed to go. When you take apart a valve body you gotta pay attention to detail. Here's the little hockey puck over here on this side that I was talking about. Another check ball. And the one that tends to fly out on this guy um, is let's see um, oh right here this one tends to fly out I've had this one fly out on me several times and I go oh wow where does it go I have three choices four choices which one does it go in and the book's not gonna really give you any information it's gonna show you an exploded view with this removed and there won't be an arrow pointing to any of these so it becomes really hard to figure out where they go. I'm going to clean it with brake clean. I'm actually going to let it sit overnight so that brake clean is going to evaporate. I'm going to clean my separate plate, separator plate and then I'm going to re reassemble it tomorrow and finish the tranny and install it. So we're pretty close. Okay. We're on. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and put our valve body onto the car. Uh, I'm not really going to go into it too, uh, over uh, too much right now but make sure your manual shift valve moves smoothly all through the range okay when we put this on make sure that this deep this spot right here ends up on the the detent or the or the um, the rod right here okay in the uh, interest of time I had to complete that overhaul and get the car on the road. So I am gonna just walk you through the remaining steps on all data and pro demand. So the valve body installation. So this picture is showing you to install two alignment pins on the valve body. And then it walks you through the steps. 
Okay, and then I want you to put the separate plate on. And again, you need to use alignment pins to get that uh, separate pl uh, plate on and the gasket. So you first put on the gasket. Okay, and then uh, you go ahead and uh, install this uh, valve body onto the transmission. Uh, there are longer bolts and short bolts. Uh, so it's really thorough. I'm telling you this is an example of a long, short bolt, the shortest one. Okay, and these are the regular length ones. The, the most. Uh, so you put these in, you're going to torque them to, uh, uh, looks like, uh, 71 to 97 inch pounds. Uh, in the specific order, all valve bodies have to be torqued in a numerical sequ sequence. Okay, then you got to put in your shift uh, lever detent and torque that on. You got to put your uh, reverse low servo cover on uh, with a gasket and then you got to torque that to spec. Okay, after you do that, then you run the wiring uh, to each solenoid uh, and plug those into the solenoids. The, uh, two, three shift, two shift solenoids, uh, or actually three shift solenoids, TCC solenoid and EPC solenoid. Uh, and then it, the harness clips into little clips, so it's showing you where the harness clips into. Next, you need to put on the, um, the uh, transmission filter, torque that to spec at 71 to 97 inch pounds. Put the pan on, and then you're going to torque that pan gasket, it looks like, to uh, 115 to 133 inch pounds. And that will wrap it up for the valve body. Uh, overhaul video was also uh, installing the overdrive and animated servos. So it shows the special tool. You could use the special tool, but you could just push it in with your hand and then install the snap ring. I never had to use that special tool. There's a little O-ring you do got to change on the cover. Uh, the pistons themselves uh, have a rubber seal that's uh, um, glued onto the piston itself, so it's serv serviceable as a uh, single item. And you put those in and install the snap ring, so that's the servos. Uh, but then you have to uh, do your uh, band adjustment. So you're going to loosen the lock nut and you're going to turn the, the center stud uh, to a uh, 120 inch pounds and then you're going to back this off two and a quarter turns for the overdrive band and for the intermediate band drop back it off two full turns and then tighten the lock nut lock nut on both of those okay and that is the the band so it's showing you 10 foot bounds which is 120 inch pounds and you back it off uh, according to spec and then you tighten the lock nut. Uh, in, this, in this case, uh, you tighten the lock nut to 35 to 44 foot pounds. And then you go on and do it to the other band. Okay. Same spec, torque specs. The only thing that's different is the amount of, uh, that you back off the, the nut. Okay. The last thing I haven't really uh, showed you in the video is uh, the procedure for checking the, the depth the st uh, for your selective thrust bearing underneath the center support. So there is a procedure where you have to use a depth micrometer in the special tool. Uh, for inches of time, I cut that out of the video because it is a long process. And you're measuring from the center support uh, uh, special tool down to your intermediate drum and you take that measurement and you uh, take actually a couple measurements and through the process you're able to figure out the the, the space between uh, the intermediate drum and your center support and from there you're able to figure out your selective thrust uh, your selective uh, bearings so they're coming in different thicknesses okay so there is a procedure for checking your stack up clearance. All right, to close out my transmission overhaul video, I also want to show you there is a uh, stack up clearance uh, measurement. 
you're using the same special tool with a depth micrometer and you're taking uh, um, uh, different measurements and then that from those different measurements you calculate it and then you're able to go with a selected thrust washer uh, they come in different colors and the colors correspond to the different sizes so there's actually two places in the transmission where you have to go through the procedure and calculate um, what uh, selective thrust washer you, uh, you need and you definitely need to have this uh, depth micrometer and that wraps it up for this video